The majority of people think of democracy as majority rule. You go in the dictionary and it tells you democracy means majority rule. And then when you go to scholarly books that talk about democratic political theory, they say to you, well, in the dictionary it says majority rule, but everybody knows it's not majority rule. He said, but let's overcome objections for a moment. Who believes that democracy is really majority rule? And learned scholars like Robert Dahl of Yale will say, well, there's these few people, they're called anarchists. They're the only ones that take democracy seriously as majority rule. Everybody knows that democracy is minority rule and that there are periodic elections where you are, you know, the majority rules on one day in November, a particular month in your country. For every two or four years, people press a button or whatever they do now to vote. I, I never participate in such things, whatever, however it works, okay? And they tell you that that is the yardstick of citizenship. And if you're not interested in the politicians of the particular parties, then you're not a good citizen. Direct democracy, like socialism, was a vision of popular councils and committees and assemblies where ordinary people would be directly self-governing. They would take responsibility for all economic planning, judicial affairs, foreign relations, all educational and cultural matters. And there was this creativity in the ordinary people where ordinary people were said to have the wisdom to govern society. And these are the ideas that were so threatening to American empire and Anglo-American empire. But in party politics in the West Indies, CLR James, who is not given credit really for theorizing the idea of a black radical tradition that in university life people talk about today, he said, you don't understand the tradition unless you understand the antagonisms within the radical tradition.